Hello, my name is uh, Ask Mike and I'm the creator of Gecko. Gecko is an open source and free tool uh, that you can use to script your own uh, trading strategies for the Bitcoin market. Uh, and Gecko will take care of everything else. So it, it, it can connect to up to 17 uh, different uh, Bitcoin exchanges where you can then use that strategy to either pay per trade, uh, which is to simulate everything and not actually spend any real money. You can actually live trade if it makes a trading bot. And you can also run your strategies over historical data, just called backtesting. Uh, and on top of that, it also has some tools to easily manage and import this historical data directly from the exchange exchanges. Uh, and in this video, I'll be showing how you can install Gecko on your own Windows computer. Um, so right now I'm on the, the Gecko homepage and I will put the link uh, in the description. Uh, and if you go to the top right here, you uh, will see a download button. So if you go there, you will be uh, guided to the installation page. And installation on Windows is a bit is a bit different. So if you go to installing Gecko on Windows, uh, that will lead you to the to the right page. The, this page will probably look different because I will most likely put this video I'm making right now up on here. Um, but the gist is that you need to install three different things. You need to install Node.js. You need to download Gecko, and then you need to install Gecko's dependencies. Uh, so Node.js is, um, uh, let, let's go ahead and, and install that right now. Uh, you, you might notice that it's running a bit slow, it's because it's running, uh, I don't actually have Windows uh, on, a, on a computer, so it's running in a, in a virtual machine. Uh, so normally it should go a lot faster, um, also other parts of the installation. Um, so if you can go to the download step over here in the top, uh, you can just download Node.js, it's also free. Um, and you can just click here on Windows Installer, but you have to make sure that LTS is, is selected uh, because that that makes it a lot easier to install other dependencies for Gecko that you will need later. Uh, because if you don't, you need to compile them manually and that, that's uh, very hard on Windows. Um, so make sure LTS is selected, click Windows Installer and, and the download will pop up. Uh, I actually already installed Node.js. So I'm not going to show you how, how that works, but it, it's pretty simple. It just pops up a wizard and uh, you can just leave everything on default. I and mean, in a minute you have Node.js installed. Um, so we will go on with the second step, which is actually uh, downloading Gecko. Um, so Gecko is open source uh, and it's hosted on GitHub. So when you download Gecko, always make sure that you are on github.com slash asmike slash Gecko, which is the official repository for it. Uh, if you download from somewhere else, it might be malicious. I would not recommend. Uh, and on this page, so if you're if you know JavaScript, you can check out all the source. Um, everything tested over here. But for now, we're just gonna simply download everything in the zip, uh, which you can do by clicking on the green button right here, and then click on download zip. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we just downloaded the zip uh, with all the source code of Gecko. So we can go ahead and extract this code. Just gonna extract it right here. Um, so yeah, normally this goes a lot faster. Uh, it's just a few. Uh, it's just um, a few uh, mags. It's just that I'm running it in a virtual box. That's a bit slow. Um, yeah, so after this is done, um, the, the only hard part of the installation happens, which is that you have to use the command line to install uh, Gecko's dependencies. Uh, so Gecko has an interface which you'll be using when you'll be working with Gecko. If you want, you can also use command line if you, if you rather. Um, but in order to get it up, you, you need to use the command line uh, for now anyway. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So if you go here in the top left where it used to say start, and uh, if you type in a CMD, it will uh, pop up the command prompt. Uh, and if you click that, we can use that to install Gecko's dependencies. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to navigate to, um, to the Gecko folder here. So we can do that by going into Downloads, which is where I downloaded and extracted Gecko. We can go into Gecko Stable. And then, as you can see, we are... This is Gecko Stable, and there is another directory called the Gecko Stable. So let's just go into that one as well. Uh, and if you go into that one, this this is uh, all the Gecko code, and we need to install uh, some dependencies. So in order to do that, you need to use a tool called npm, 
which came with Node.js. So if you installed Node.js, this should just work. Uh, and we type npm space install, and we hit enter. Okay, everything is uh, installed now. Um, so, so now we're done with installing Gecko, and we can if we can run it. Um, so in order to run it, you need to stay in this command line uh, and type the following command: a node space Gecko space dash dash UI. Um, uh, because this will instruct Gecko to actually start the the web interface. So uh, once you've done this, you hit enter. Uh, and Gecko should pop up like this. Uh, and again, normally it's a lot faster just because I'm running on the VM. That's really slow. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is Gecko running here. Um, so what we can do now, for example, we can uh, import some local data real quick, uh, just to show you how that works. Um, so under local data, you can manage your data, but we don't have any because we just downloaded it. Um, and we, so if we go here at the bottom, we can go to import more data, go to the importer. Um, so in this example, I will be downloading some stuff from, um, from Poloniex. We're interested in the market USDC, BTC, but it supports uh, a lot of different Poloniex markets as well as different exchanges. Um, so let's say like it, it, on default, it selects the three months of data, but let's just uh, put that at... Um, just two days, just to see what happens. So this is, uh, we, we want from the 17th of April up until the 19th of April, which is today. Uh, and then if you click import, it, um, um, now it's importing. Um, so you don't have to, to manage with CSV files or JSON files or whatever. Uh, you can just use this interface to download data directly from the exchange um yeah and uh, let's give this a second to, to, to see what happens if it's done So what we now did is we um, a gecko talk to Podonix in the background, uh, got a lot of different information, market information, uh, transformed all the data into something that uh, gecko is is, is uh, better better in handling. And now it's it's th this data from these three days is stored on your computer. So what you can do, for example, now is backtest, which means run. Uh, a strategy over uh, this data. So on the back test, we have to first select the data set. Uh, we only have one, the one that we just imported. Uh, so we'll list it over here. It will say uh, Polonix, UCT, BTC. Um, so we can select this, um, and then we have to find a strategy because uh, but we didn't actually write one. That will uh, I will uh, make, make another video about that at some point. But Gecko comes with a, with a few strategies, so, so we can check it out over here. Uh, so this is the, the Gecko page again. If we go to documentation uh, and we scroll down a little bit and we click go under strategies, we click on example strategies. So these are strategies that come with Gecko. So an easy one is, uh, is MACB, uh, which basically looks at the market. Like, can we see, Nick? I think it, it has a, a chart over here. So this is a price chart you can see. Uh, the price goes up and down, and MACD is a, is a strategy that uses a single indicator called MACD that will basically average out. So it will say basically from here up until here, it will see this as a downtrend. So as soon as it detects this downtrend over here, it will try to sell. Um, but you still need to configure it accordingly because of, uh, depending on the market and whatever, it might not detect these trends properly. Um, so let's just give an example. Um, let's just set it up to a few minutes. Um, so what this means is you can configure the, 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 the size of the candles over which it calculates this average. So the lower you set this monitor, uh, the lower you set the candle size, the, the, the faster the MACD signal will respond in trends, which is either bad and good. Like if it responds super fast, obviously you are uh, the first in the trend. 
but the negative side is that it might not be a trend because it's just um, one person selling some. Whereas if you send to an hour or a day or a few days, uh, you won't really see that noise. But because we only have three days of data now, I will just send it to a few minutes just to see what happens. Uh, and, and then these are the, the, the parameters of MACD you can configure. You can be more about those on the, the, the Gecko website. Um, you can configure so your paper trader settings. So here you can select, uh, because Gecko will simulate trading uh, using signals that come out of the strategy. Um, and then it will uh, calculate how much money you would have made. But uh, trading always costs money. Uh, there are fees. There's also slippage involved and there's some, some spread. Um, which you can all configure here, so it will simulate based on these settings. And once you're, you're satisfied with everything, you just click backtest over here. Um, uh, yeah, okay, well, apparently this wasn't very smart. If we would have done this a few days ago, uh, three days ago, if we would have started it, and then up until now, we would have lost a lot of money. Like, if we went in with $1,300, we would have now only have $960. Um, and then here you can see a chart, so this is the price chart, um, exactly according to the candle size that Gecko or your strategy saw. Uh, you can click on this and then you can zoom in a little bit. Uh, we're feeling laggy normally, it's a lot faster. Uh, yeah, so the green dots over here are uh, buy signals, the red dots are sell signals. So all these ones are actually really bad because uh, you want to... Uh, have it so that, that the, the green ones are lower than the red ones, where, where, where you'll make some money. So let's just quickly see what happens if we change this to another one. Uh, this works sometimes for these kind of markets. Uh, 35 or so. Okay, let's just... Uh, and uh, okay, we can click best test again, and we'll just rerun. Uh, so as you can see with, with, with Gecko, uh, once you... Ah, uh, here we actually made some profit. But we didn't actually chain. We didn't actually trade. So that doesn't really help us a lot. So let's put this down. Uh, as you can see, I'm just playing around with the parameters that come with the default strategies. Um, the idea with Gecko is that you make your own strategies. Uh, I'll just it, it did a few things. It did a few things. So it made some money. Um, so it made a zero point seven percent. But as you can see here, the market made 2%. So if you would just have bought in the beginning of the period, you would have made more money than using this strategy. But with both, you made some money. So uh, you can't really complain about that too much. Um, but yeah, but that's that's basically the gist of Gecko. Um, in some other videos, I will show you more advanced stuff, like how you can create, how you can script your own strategies um, using um, a bunch of indicators. Uh, but yeah. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, or if I'm not responding in the comments, uh, just post an issue on GitHub um, where I'm more, more likely to respond, especially if you have technical issues. So the last thing I wanted to show you is um, that uh, after the back test, so you, you configure the settings above, uh, this is where you can see the result, you can see the graph, and then if you scroll down even more, you can see the round trips. Uh, I've yet to come up with a better name, but this basically means um, um, a buy and then a sell signal. So uh, every time you did, um, for example, this one here, so you, you would have bought here at the green one at like around 12.50, you'd have sold at 12.55 over here. Um, so this is basically like a $5 uh, profit per, uh, per Bitcoin. Uh, and this, this table lists all of those round trips. Uh, they all list um, uh, the the PL is the, the profit or the loss. If it if it's a minus, it's a loss. Uh, and the profit is in percentage. Um, and the balance basically will go up or down. So uh, don't mind the PL too much. Um, at the end, it will be um, if you have really successful strategy, it will be higher than in the beginning. Uh, just because all your previous days were successful, but it doesn't really make uh, that particular trade interesting. And you can see exposure as well. And exposure, um, um, the idea is that uh, if you look at this market, this is USD BTC, uh, and USD is considered very stable. Uh, that's your base currency. Whereas as the the price of Bitcoin goes up and down, it's very volatile, uh, which means it's risky to hold. So you want to limit the time that you hold it, which is called your exposure, um, which is basically a uh, time or, or a duration of time, a, a time length. 
Um, so you want this to be as short as possible. Um, uh, and, I'm, and I'm working now on some upgrades to, to this information to also um, include some exposure information as well as some risk metrics. Uh, but, but you guys will have to wait for that a little bit. Okay.